Saint Ignatius of Antioch, Syrian Bishop, Pure Bread of God, Ground by the Teeth of Wild Beasts, from 35 AD to 108 AD. He is also called Ignatius Theophorus, meaning God-bearer. He is known mainly from seven highly regarded letters that he wrote during a trip to Rome as a prisoner condemned to be executed for his beliefs. These letters have been cited as a source of knowledge of the second century church. He represented the Christian religion in transition from its Jewish origins to its assimilation in the Greco-Roman world. His advocacy of a hierarchical structure of the church with emphasis on episcopal authority, his insistence on the real humanity of Christ and his ardent desire for martyrdom are subjects that have generated much discussion. Chief historian Eusebius of Caesarea reported that Ignatius' arrest and his condemnation to the wild beasts in the Roman arena occurred during the reign of the Roman Emperor Trajan and dates the event to 107 or 108. It is possible that he knew St. John personally. His thought is strongly influenced by the letters of St. Paul and also by the tradition connected with Apostle John. He was taken prisoner during a persecution of the Antioch Church. He was put in chains and escorted along with others by a unit of soldiers to Trovas in Asia Minor to Rome. All along his way, leaders of churches accompanied him from town to town. At Smyrna, he was warmly received by the local Christians and their bishop, St. Polycarp, his beloved friend. After these leaders left Smyrna, he wrote letters to their respective communities thanking them for their attention and offering them guidelines for their lives as Christians. At his request, the deacon, Burrus of Ephesus, was allowed to stay with him. He also wrote to Rome, urging his fellow Christians there not to prevent his martyrdom by intercession on his behalf. He wrote to the congregations at Philadelphia and Simidna. Some church leaders from Simidna gave him the news that Antioch was again at peace. His death in the Roman arena is recorded by Polycarp's disciple Saint Irenaeus. The letters of Ignatius abound in warnings against false doctrines and false teachers and in admonitions to preserve peace and concord by willing subordination in all religious matters to the clergy and the bishop. He apparently fought two groups of heretics. One, Judaizers, who did not accept the authority of the NT and clung to such Jewish practices as observing the Sabbath. And secondly, Docetists, who held that Christ had suffered and died only in appearance. He untiringly affirmed that the New Testament was the fulfillment of the Old Testament and instituted insisted upon the reality of Christ's human nature. For him, Christ's passion, his death and resurrection were a vital guarantee of life everlasting in the risen Christ. Had Christ died only in appearance, Ignatius believed that his own suffering and his readiness to sacrifice his life for Christ would have no meaning. He does not even take up St. Paul's antinomy of flesh and spirit. For him, the spirit is above the flesh rather than against it. On this earth, the bishop represents to his church the true bishop Christ. Worship means union with Christ. Those who in a spirit of pride break away from the bishop destroy that union. He used the expression Catholic Church for the first time, meaning the whole church that is one and the same wherever there is a Christian congregation. His letter to the Church of Rome is by far the longest and the richest. His desire to become a martyr is also linked with his understanding of union with Christ. To be a perfect disciple of Christ means to imitate Christ in his passion, to share in it, to be united with Christ in suffering. Many times in his letters, Ignatius accuses himself of being imperfect because 
he has not yet been put to this test. For him, love of martyrdom ultimately springs from a deep conviction that only by union with Christ's passion will he participate in Christ's glory. Even this belief does not free him from the fear that he might recoil in the face of the death and he asks the churches to pray for his strength and constancy. In his letter to the church of Simena, he finds words of special warmth for the deacons. They are most dear to him and he likes to speak of them as his fellow slaves. Saint Polycarp stands out as his personal friend. Polycarp received the only personal letter from Ignatius. It is a letter of advice from an experienced older man to a younger one who still has to find his way. Polycarp in turn when writing to the Philippians, praises Ignatius as an example of patience and of willingness to suffer for Christ. Polycarp made a collection of Ignatius' letters and sent them to the Church of Philippi. The re rediscovery of the letters in their original form, however, has led to a just an objective assessment of his personality and his views against their historical backgrounds. His famous quotations, I am the wheat of God and am ground by the teeth of the wild beasts that I may be found the pure bread of God. I long after the Lord, the Son of the true God and Father, Jesus Christ, him I seek, who died for us and rose again. I am eager to die for the sake of Christ. My love has been crucified and there is no fire in me that loves anything, but there is living water springing up in me and it says to me inwardly come to this father it is right therefore that we not just be called christians but that we actually be christians through our deeds therefore run together as into one temple of god as to one altar as to one jesus christ who came from the one father and is with and has gone to one being come together in the same place, let there be one prayer, one supplication, one mind, one hope in love and in joy undefiled. There is one Jesus Christ than whom nothing is more excellent. Thank you.